We're here in an autonomous vehicle event, and your solar cells are here. What the heck is Alta Devices doing at this event? Well, we're definitely trying to drum up more uh, automotive business. So we're a maker of solar cells, and uh, we would like to integrate our solar cells onto vehicles, passenger vehicles, as well as commercial trucks. And the idea is to harvest light to power uh, the vehicle and all these uh, electronics that are very power hungry, uh, like lasers and LIDARs that need juice to operate and give the vehicle its autonomy. But as a company today, uh, we're mostly selling into uh, flight applications, unmanned flight, so drones, uh, fixed wing drones, airships, and uh, satellites, uh, but definitely targeting the automotive market in earnest today. And what's amazing is I just held a wing of a drone in my hand and it was lightweight. Why don't you talk about the properties of this that make it lightweight? Yeah, so the product itself, it's using a semiconductor material that's very well known and proven, gallium arsenide. Uh, but we have uh, innovated to make it uh, very low cost. And we also have a very interesting form factor because it is super thin, lightweight and flexible and has ultra high conversion efficiency. So the, the amount of light you can convert to electricity and so basically the result, and that's our claim to fame, is uh, amazing power to weight. We get a lot of power uh, with very little weight added and uh, energy density or power to area. So when you're a commercial drone, you want to fly as long as possible. You want to have you know, a ton of endurance. Uh, of course, the ability to put these solar cells on the wings and get all this additional flight time uh, at very, very, in return for very low weight and, uh, and uh, very little surface, that's a major plus. And you mentioned uh, even airships. People are using it to drive motors, right? Yeah, you would be amazed at how many people are trying to uh, put up balloons in the air or even in the stratosphere to do various things, to do communications, to do, you know, recon and surveillance. Uh, but Google Loon is not the only company. There are a lot of companies uh, developing those airships, those dirigibles, the, even those balloons. And they are all facing the conundrum of, you know, how are we going to power those things, particularly if they stay aloft for weeks or months on end? You know, what's going to power the motor to keep them stationary? What's going to power the payload, their eyes, their sensors, their antennas? And of course, what's going to recharge the battery for when the balloon is in darkness and needs to continue operating so it doesn't just drift away and ends up crashing in North Korea. Yeah, you want to be able to talk at night and not just in the daytime. But from a practical application for vehicles, where do you see this rolling out in the vehicle world? Yeah, so most of our work today is in uh, kind of proof of concept projects. Uh, we want to embed solar cells into sunroofs, so basically embed them in glass. Uh, in other areas of the car, uh, like the, the spoiler, the bonnet, uh, we're also uh, looking at some interesting concepts, almost like uh, extensible sails, you know, that could become like uh, concentrators for uh, solar uh, energy while the car is parked in open air. And the idea is to really um, it, give more juice to the car for range extension and for uh, powering some of the, the electronics in the car. Most of our work today is in uh, really proving that uh, the aesthetics are right and also reliability, that we can, uh, you know, we can be uh, parked in extreme heat, like in Phoenix in the month of August, and the solar material is not going to degrade. Yeah, and imagine that's a huge factor with the environment that cars have to uh, travel in. Yeah, most of the warranties on cars are, as we know, you know, five, seven, ten years. And so the solar material needs to last even longer than that. And it needs to face, you know, a number of environmental insults and very tough operating conditions, whether it's snow impacts, bird droppings. And we need to show that uh, it's going to be one of the, actually the sturdiest components of the car uh, that really doesn't need service at all. So from a dollar per watt perspective, can it pay for itself in those scenarios, do you think? I think it will get there. Uh, I think it has to be you know, an option available to the consumer. Uh, 
uh, not only for a green image, but to also get more of that autonomy. Uh, you know, it's going to be probably in the low thousands of uh, dollars uh, to have a fully uh, equipped solar car. And, uh, you know, you will get it back in terms of uh, range extension, the fact that you will have to charge less and you will have more autonomy uh, for years uh, to come. When you talk about range extension, you know, percentage-wise, what do you think you're looking at here? Yeah, so we're looking at marginal improvements, to be honest. You know, when you look at a, a drone, we're talking about 5x extension of the flight time. Uh, for a car, we're talking maybe 10, 15, 20 percent. Uh, we're talking also about uh, reducing the parasitic effect on the battery, which the battery actually drains trying to cool itself okay. while the car is resting. And we're powering some of the, uh, the onboard electronics, you know, everything from the uh, entertainment systems, the AC blower. So there is a payback, but it is incremental. And so, of course, the cost needs to reflect that. And with the 29% efficiency, that will make up for the fact that you might not be positioned uh, properly or you might be under some trees or something. So uh, you, you'll still have some decent efficiency, I assume. Yeah, the efficiency is uh, world record, and we're very proud of that. You know, we've, we've beat our own record a number of times. We're also good in low light, so you, you need to have, you know, very small amount of light, like 50 lux, very diffuse light, dawn or dusk, and we can already harvest uh, light. And then we have also a very good temperature coefficient by, by solar photovoltaics. Uh, standpoint, so we don't degrade when it's very hot or very cold, while most other technologies do. So basically, the car uh, can get electricity uh, very, very quickly, and uh, and we're producing juice uh, when you need it, where you need it. Speaking of producing, these are produced right now in a fab in Sunnyvale, but do you have plans to scale uh, beyond that in the near future? Yeah, so we're in all in one building in Sunnyvale, we have the commercial team, we have R&D, and we have a, a small semiconductor fab in Sunnyvale. Uh, yes, we want to expand uh, both with a second U.S. factory as well as an international factory. And eventually, uh, of course, we want to uh, achieve volume production, which will help us reduce the cost by amortizing you know, more people, more material, more tools over a uh, bigger capacity. Uh, over time. Excellent. Well, Ben, thank you very much for this uh, you enlightening, so uh, enlightening discussion. <laughs> thank you.